and letter in his hand, and it was written. Now we have the contents of this fifth letter. It is reported among the nations, and Geshem agrees, that you and the Jews plan to rebel. This is the reason you're building the wall. According to these reports, you are to become their king and have even set up the prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim on your behalf, there is a king in Judah. These rumors will be heard by the king, so let us confer together. You see, this is kind of an enticing letter to Nehemiah. We know what you're doing, so you might as well come down and talk to us now. Let's look at his reply again. Then I replied to him, there is nothing to these rumors you are spreading. You are inventing them in your own mind, for they are all trying to intimidate us, saying they will become discouraged in the work and it will never be finished. You see, this was the goal of Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem, that the work never be finished. But look at what it says in the latter part of this verse. But now my God strengthens me. When things don't go right in what we're trying to do for the Lord, we start to question our own ability. Well, I just can't do it. If things start to go wrong, the first thing I have a tendency to believe about myself, well, I just don't have what it takes. I must not be able to do this. Or then we do something that's even worse, is we question God's faithfulness. Well, Lord, you called me to do this, but you have not been faithful. I have had this problem and this problem, and where have you been? Now, that's, that's pretty dreadful, but we can get to that place. And then we can do what I thought about doing when I didn't receive the vote. I thought about just giving up. I had a job. I, uh, you know, from a financial or a working person standpoint, I didn't have to go into <laughs> ministry at all. But there is no account anywhere in the entire prophecy of Nehemiah that he ever, ever contemplated giving up on the work. We don't even have a single comment that he made questioning his work. So no matter how bad it got, he just stuck with it. And you know what? In all the heroes of the Bible, I believe Nehemiah is one of the great Bible heroes. He did a great thing. Nehemiah's opponents here wanted a meeting. On the surface, it looked like something good. Come, let us meet together in the villages of the Ono Valley. You know what Nehemiah said to Ono? Oh, he said, oh no, we're not gonna meet there. They saw the progress being made they said, let's meet together, let's talk, or a favorite, well, not so much a favorite word of mine, but a word that I have heard so much was, let's have dialogue. You ever hear somebody say that? Let me tell you, at the Church of the Brethren Annual Conference, you hear that an awful lot. Let's have dialogue together, they would say. And so these sinners, I might as well name them what they are, these sinners who were trying to push forward all kinds of what they called progressive. I didn't think there was anything progressive about it. They were pushing forth liberal uh, issues, and they wanted to dialogue with us about it. My question is, what is there to talk about? You're committing sinful acts, and you want everyone to agree with you that it's okay to do this, and you want to sit down and have dialogue with me about it. And I tell you, I tried to have some dialogue with them before. You know what their dialogue is? Just convincing you that they're right. That's their dialogue. Waste of time for the most part. I got in a conversation 
with a couple on an elevator. And by the time we went to the first floor to about the 10th floor, you wouldn't have believed what those couple people said to me. In just that short amount of time, they was able to question almost everything the Bible said about homosexuality. And they concluded at the, about the 10th floor that it was no use talking to me. I didn't have anything to say at that time. I didn't. I was part of it. Nehemiah was able to see quickly through their offer. I like that it's early in verse 2. But they were planning to harm me. Mm -hmm. You know, not all salesmen or ladies, not women, uh, salesmen and women, not all salesmen are uh, devils. There's good salesmen out there. And um, how about those people that uh, try to sell uh, timeshares? Has anybody taken a two-week, a two-night vacation somewhere, and all you had to do, you know, you get this for free, and all you had to do is go through a two-hour demonstration of why you ought to buy a timeshare? Oh my goodness! And they talk to you for three hours. It's supposed to be two hours, and they talk to you for three hours, and then if you won't buy, they bring in the big shot, and he gives you the last deal that he will give you. And I said no so many times. And I finally said to this one fellow, I said, listen, our family already has two. We really don't even want them, and we certainly don't want another one. And I said, your cost is way too high. You know what he said back to me? He said, what? Are you unemployed, unemployed or what? <laughs> yeah. He asked me if I was unemployed. I might have been at that time. I don't even know. But yeah, we might tend to think they're on our side, but really what's on their side is just making that sale. That's all they want to do. And if you ever take a free offer, be sure that you will have about a $79 fee somewhere along the line to get your free offer. And then your offer will only be permitted on the times that it's available, which is almost never. You'll find that you probably won't even get to do it in the year that they give you to. How important it is it for us to pray for godly wisdom every single morning? Because someone, somewhere out there, is going to try to undermine you or me. And I'm not demonizing every person I run into, but I'm just saying that Satan is working everywhere he can to try to undermine the godly work that we might do. And so if we wonder, Lord, what is happening? You called me to do this, but I'm having nothing but trouble and obstacles and, and just struggles to get through this. Well, we shouldn't be surprised. 1 Peter 3, 8, or 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be serious. Be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. Well, he reminds me of our cat, Lucy. And oh, by the way, we still have a foster cat. We're still looking for a good home for the cutest little kitty cat you ever saw, but we don't want him. <laughs> He's age free. He don't have AIDS. He don't have leukemia. If the vet had his way, he'd have tested him for a dozen other things. And we said, no, we think he's good. And he has lived for two weeks, so he must be pretty good. And, but Lucy, our cat, she lurks around the house seeking who she can devour. And she's earned her keep. She's caught a couple mice in her time. And she prays them around the house like, look who, what I've got. Every day, you and I set out into a battle. Now, some religious people won't even sing about Christians marching towards Zion. 
because they don't want to talk about anything military, militaristic. But I'm telling you, whether you want to talk about military or not, Christians are in a battle, and if you deny it, you're only denying reality. Scripture puts it very plain that Satan is deceptive, and he will cloak his offers in some type of appealing package that will look on the onset and at least surface level, superficially, will look good. And we might desire these things for a little bit. Be tempted. Because as I said, it looks very good. Satan can put on a positive cover on a disastrous gift of some type. Now, some salesmen are devils, or at least are influenced by the devil. Christy and I was in Fairmont on uh, Wednesday. She went out there to work at her new job for a little bit. Coming back from Morgantown, before we got off of 68, we saw a sign that said, Big Bear Lake. Anybody ever heard of Big Bear Lake? That's exactly what I thought. Well, about 40 years ago, I think it was before we were married, I got some kind of offer to come up to Big Bear Lake for a presentation and they'll give you a free gift. I have no idea what the gift was. I guess I got it. But Big Bear Lake at that time was a, an area where they were selling camping spots. Now the camping spot that they would sell you would be about as big as this stage here in front. Now that's the spot. Might be 10 or 12 feet wide by maybe 20 feet long. It was a spot in the woods. And I don't know what came over me. Maybe it was Christy doing it. They sold me a spot. I paid over $2,000 for a spot at Big Bear Lake. We came home and told her mother and dad what we proudly had done. And both of them thought we were crazy. What did you just do? Well, I sat there and thought about it a little bit, and I said, well, what did I just do? You know, we just bought a lot at Big Bear Lake, and I can't even <laughs> tell you what was there about Big Bear Lake that anybody would even want to buy a lot there in the first place. I mean, I don't must have been a lake around there somewhere, but I didn't see it. There was other people who were camping on their little 10 by 20 lots. Everybody looked happy to me, and I guess that's what we just thought. We wanted to have a spot in the Big Bear Lake, too. Well, when we got home and come to our senses, we decided we did not want a spot at Big Bear Lake. Do you know it took me several days, and I almost had to get a lawyer to back out of that deal? If it wouldn't have been a real estate deal, you probably could not have backed out of it because it was real estate you did have about three or four days before it was finalized. So just because of that, we saved $2,500 from a lot Big Bear Lake. Let me tell you, you can be talked into stuff if you're not careful. At least I can. The last time we was at, share, at the timeshare, you can probably guess it already, I bought one of those free weekend deals. And that's been about a year ago, and we haven't been able to use it yet. And I think there was a $79 fee or something. Who knows? With wisdom from God, Nehemiah made the prophet, proper reply, I have work to do, he said. He responded four times, I have work to do. And this letter, this fifth letter finally revealed what they were trying to do. They were accusing Nehemiah of plotting to be a king. And Nehemiah seemed to have the whole thing figured out from the very start. Those letters didn't have one chance at tempting Nehemiah. He even said, they are trying to intimidate us. They are trying to harm me. Satan now has a plot against every good work you and I 
are attempting to do. Now, in that verse I just read from 1 Peter 5, 8, that Satan is going like a roaring devil, prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. You know what 1 Peter 5, 10 says? Just a couple verses later. Now the God of all grace who called you into his eternal glory in Jesus Christ will personally restore, establish, strengthen, and support you. Like the song we just sang. Nobody greater, nobody stronger, nobody higher than our God. Nehemiah remembered who is in control and we should also remember ourselves. There's more to this story and the rest of the story here I'm not going to be able to go into uh, in detail. Let me just close with this sad story. On the computer this week, this past week, and how many know you don't believe everything you see on the computer? Do not believe everything you see on a computer. So there was a little side note and I don't know what site it was on. It might have been Facebook, but I don't know for sure. There was a little side note that Charles Stanley had been accused of something. You know the pastor, Charles Stanley? I watch him an awful lot. I like him. And when I saw Charles Stanley being accused of something, the first thought come up to my mind, well, okay, what are they trying to pull now on Charles Stanley? And here it was, Dr. Charles Stanley is legally and openly advocating the use of a CBC type of pain reliever. Now, CBC is a derivative of marijuana, but it does not make you high in any way. It is a non-prescription and much cheaper form of pain reliever that has the endorsement of several ministers and evangelists who actually use this stuff. There is nothing to be accused about when it comes to Charles Stanley on this. But that didn't change the headlines from reading, Charles Stanley is accused. And a lot of people will just see that much and never look any further and believe now that Charles Stanley made some kind of great mistake. Well, the wall was finished, the Bible says here, in 52 days. They realized the task had been accomplished by our God. Well, I'm telling you, when God sets out to do something, it doesn't really matter how many. In verse 15 of chapter 6, the wall was complete in 52 days. When our enemies heard this, all surrounding nations were intimidated, lost their confidence, for they realized, here it is, that this task had been accomplished by our God. It will be accomplished. Young people, what are you setting out to do today in your life? Young marriage, what godly goals might you set in your early years of marriage? When I uh, counsel young couples getting married, I say one of the best things you can do is to find some kind of, of godly or spiritual goal that both of you join into at one time together. Sons and daughters, what will you train yourself to do that will please God? There is always something spiritual to do in our lives. Get about it. Do the work. Have the confidence that Nehemiah had. And you and God through you will accomplish those goals. Let's pray. Lord, I can hardly list or imagine the goals that any of us could have. They can be wonderful. And so, Lord, I, I pray that what we share today will be, oh God, just a testimony of what God does through us. That we won't step aside or give in to discouragement, but know that only God is training us for the greater things that he would have us to do. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.